and welcome to Laura's library card. So it's already time for my April wrap up. Oh, my first wrap up. I can't believe April's over already. It felt like March took six years and April took six seconds. I don't understand how that physics works, but here we are. It's May, time for the April wrap up. So I read nine books, if you count that novella and short story, which I will. Uh, which is a total of 3,028 pages. So not too shabby. Uh, it was mostly ebooks because my library is still closed and uh, a few e audiobooks too. So looking back on my nine books, there's actually some interesting trends. They are all romances and all contemporary, which is already changing for May because I'm in the middle of a historical romance right now. And um, interestingly, I both started and ended the month with an L. Kennedy book, um, book two and three of the Briar University series. Um, and I also read two Christina Lauren books, which she's the, that duo is one of my favorite author pairs, authors out there. Um, and interestingly, I loved, loved, love autobiography, which I've read before. Uh, and it's my first reread of the year. Also kind of weird because I'm a big rereader usually. Um, and I didn't really like their Twice in a Blue Moon. So it's kind of weird to have the two juxtaposed in the same month. So just to kind of quickly run through what I've read and give a quick uh, summary, brief blurb, and my rating. And a couple of them I will uh, refer to reviews that I'm intending to do on the book more fully. So the first book that I read in April was called The Risk and it was by L. Kennedy and it was the second book in the Briar University series and it features Jake and Brenna who are sort of enemies to lovers uh, because her father is the coach of Briar's hockey team and Jake is the star on the Harvard team. And so they, you know, she really shouldn't be crossing enemy lines. Um, and it was cute, I, you know, it was fine. Um, for me, I didn't really get the impression that they were trying to sell that Jake was like this partier playboy figure. Um, I just don't really, I didn't really get that feel, um, but I liked how he and Brenna worked out and uh, you know, it was moderately steamy, so it was like a pretty solid three. The second book I read in April was Twice in a Blue Moon by author duo Christina Lauren, and I gotta say I didn't love it. Uh, it's a sort of second chance romance where the first half of the book, the characters are young and they meet and they fall in love and it's this whirlwind new adult, you know, teen romance and they're on vacation and it's in London and it's so like whirlwind, but then something happens. And then the second half of the book is them as adults. It's actually been a 14 year time jump. Um, for me, I didn't really love this. I felt there was really great build up and tension when they were young, but then it seems like the reasons that they kind of split up were understandable, but I didn't understand why the characters were like still nursing these hurts 14 years later. Um, I just kind of had a couple issues with it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna might, I might do a review of that book. So keep an eye out for that. The third book that I read in April was actually just a quick short story. Uh, it's called Beard With Me by Penny Reed. And she writes the Winston Brothers series, which is a family of seven plus kids, uh, brothers, they're hot, it's Tennessee, they're sort of a little bit, bit of Southern, a little bit of hillbilly, but uh, every single one of them has got the full beard and just charming Southern gentleman. Um, but this story was actually a short story, it was only like a dozen pages or so, and it focused on two characters who were sort of tertiary characters to the entire series. So it was just a quick little like, not even that steamy, sort of hinted at steaming uh, short story. The fourth book I read in April was called Happy Trail and it was by Daisy Prescott. And so she is actually a different author, I believe from Penny Reed, but Penny Reed's Winston Brothers series was set in Green Valley, Tennessee. And now there's these Green Valley Chronicles 
And I, when I found Winston Brothers like over a year ago, I was like, okay, there's a series of Winston Brothers. And then just recently I said, whoa, 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 what are all these Green Valley Chronicles? And it turns out that the town really inspired a lot of other authors as the setting. And so there's a series about the library and there's a series about the bakery and there's a series about the park rangers. And so Happy Trails is a Green Valley's chronicle and sort of somewhat related to the Winston Brothers. Um, and so this is a story where the main the main male character is a park ranger and the main female character is this like socialite media influencer and she uh, and her boyfriend had started to walk the Appalachian Trail and or hike the Appalachian Trail and she and her boyfriend like break up while they're on the trail but she's like you know what I've never done anything never finished things in my life I'm gonna continue finishing I'm gonna continue hiking and do it myself and prove to myself how awesome I am and so then the two of them uh meet and there's like a storm so it's sort of a forced forced proximity romance because they fall in love sort of overnight um I thought it was cute but I don't love forced proximity because I feel like there's not enough time for the characters to get to know each other usually. So this one was fine for whatever reason. It's just like not really memorable. Um, I, I kind of thought it was fine. I didn't find it particularly steamy. I just kind of after it was done was easily able to set it down and move on. Um, so it was, you know, pretty middle of the road. I'd give it sort of two and a half, three stars. The fifth book that I read in April, we're halfway there. It was called Beard Necessities by Penny Reed, and it was the seventh book in the Winston Brothers series. And so this is, I think, actually the like culmination of all of the brothers' stories. Um, and so I was really happy to read it because it was finally a chance to like see Scarlett slash Claire and Billy and their story, which we've you know, is so tragic and we keep being hinted at throughout all the other books. Um, I didn't love that it didn't actually take place in Green Valley. Um, and it's sort of what there were a lot of all the other uh, siblings were like contriving to get the two of them together. Um, and I sometimes felt like their reasons for why they should be not together were like a little weak because like love should triumph all. Um, but ultimately I really liked it and there were some uh, steamy scenes and it was great to finally have this long relationship, uh, you know, happily ever after. The sixth book that I read in April was called One Night Rodeo, and this was by Lorelai James, and it is a Western uh, themed book, and it was actually the fourth book in the Blacktop Cowboy series. So I found this series at the start of the year uh, just because someone had posted like, isn't this book cover ridiculous? And it was, you know, the, the shirtless, you know, Fabio kind of guy and he had a cowboy hat on and giant belt buckle with this, you know, finger in the belt loops. And I was like, mm, it looks good to me. So I started reading the Blacktop Cowboy series and uh, One Night Rodeo is the fourth book in that series. And we finally get to see Celia's story and it's no surprise that she ends up with Kyle um, because they've been sort of hinting at that tension, which I thought was kind of actually interesting because the first book has Kyle in it too. So that's a character we've kind of are returning to. Um, and this is a fake marriage trope. So the um, very early in the story, they get married drunkenly in Vegas. And of course, he's already in love with her. And so he is tr determined to make the, the, you know, fake marriage, a real marriage, and they kind of make a deal. And um, over time, of course, they both fall for each other, but they both think that the other person you know, is that there's an expiration date on this and like, how can they make the marriage actually work, uh, in, you know, secretly. So I really liked it and I'm, I'm really planning on doing a review because I felt like it was a better written and constructed story than some of the, uh, the previous books in the series. So um, I plan to do a book review on that one because I really liked how Celia and Kyle came together and a lot of their conflicts just felt really real. So um, I think I rated that. Yeah, that's a 4.6 almost as high as the autobiography, which ultimately was my highest rated. The next book was The Secret Note by Lauren Rowe, Rao. Uh, and this was sort of a novella and it was a uh, free ebook that I just sort of stumbled across and was like, oh yeah, let's just read this. So it starts off with the main two characters. They don't know each other. They've just met 
like that weekend or something and they have a, a fling. She passes him a secret note that says, hey, they're camping sneak into my tent tonight and like bring a condom. And so I was like, oh, we're diving right into this. This is like page three. So they, he comes to her tent, they have a wild and crazy night and they both really um, feel this great connection. The sex is really great. Um, and then it's, it's sort of a second chance romance because then they split up and it's like a time jump of seven or eight years later. So then they kind of reunite and he wants to have a relationship and she's kind of like, I don't know if I want to have a relationship. Like maybe we should just enjoy the one night fantasy and like, you know, nothing can live up to that. Um, so this book was really short. It was just this quick novella. I felt like it kind of skimmed. It was very, it was very, it was almost like smutty instead of steamy, but like, um, you know, it was, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, hot stuff. And, uh, my problem was that it was, you know, my problem with novellas and short stories is that you don't get enough time to really like love the characters. And I wish I would have seen more of why they really fell for each other because there was another time jump um, later. So it was just like, it felt like suddenly they were like together and committed and happy and like happily ever after. And I was like, we saw sex and nothing really else. So I wish that could have been, I would have almost been more interested if that had been a full length book. So ultimately, I only rated that a two just because I was like, I wish this was more, but that's not really fair for a novella. The second Christina Lauren book that I read this month in April was Autobiography, which is one of my favorites and it was a reread. So I listened to the audiobook and again, I just really loved it. Um, I really like Tanner and Sebastian's story. It's, you know, like a forbidden romance because uh, Sebastian is Mormon and you know he's not supposed to be gay and he's not supposed to um, act on any of his you know homosexual feelings but of course he develops feelings for Tanner and Tanner reciprocates those feelings. The book is just really well written. I really liked how they captured teen angst and like joy and intensity. Um, so I think I'm gonna do a whole review on that even though uh, I have read it before because it's just like one of my favorites and I had to come back and reread it and I just, I felt that same like slow burn tension this time through that I did the first time. So that was ended up being my highest rated book of the month at uh, 4.7, barely eking out over one night rodeo, but I intend to do a book review on that too. So look for that. And the last book that I read this month that I just barely squeaked in and finished April 30th was The Play by L. Kennedy. And that's the third book in the Briar U uh, series. And so this one t is finally Hunter Davenport as our main male character. And he meets Demi, Demi Davis. And uh, they are friends to lovers because they, she has a boyfriend at the start. They get assigned to work together for a psychology project and uh, they start meeting and he has taken a vow of celibacy because some of his sexual exploits in like book two which are sort of referenced um, he felt like they cost them the like hockey tournament so it's so you know that up front he's about he's taken a vow of celibacy she has a boyfriend um, they're just friends everything's fine and I really like that because I was like none of the other L. Kennedy books that I've read have had friends first they've always met each other and then it's just like an instant like lust instant like romantic relationship so I thought that was kind of a fun um difference for L. Kennedy to do um I liked it I didn't love it I just sort of it's sort of like this like fluff and it's the story and because those are two main characters you know where it's going um I thought it was a little weird because it's it's in the blurb so it's not really that much of a spoiler but like Demi and her boyfriend end up breaking up um, a fair way through the book, actually. And she's like, oh, so everything sucks. Everything's miserable. I'm so sad. But then she decides she needs a rebound. And she's determined to make Hunter her rebound because she already feels so comfortable with him. Um, and so then it's sort of like her like torturing him because he's taking this vow of celibacy. Um, so I don't know. I just... it it seemed too fast. Like we never really got the two of them talking about um, him surprise breaking his vow of celibacy to like be with her. Um, but, and they do kind of end up happily ever after, even though they both kind of go through dramatic changes about like what they want to do with their life. 
So I don't know, I ultimately only rated that just like a 2.8, just kind of like middle of the road for me. One thing I will say about Elle Kennedy is her Briar U uh, series and the Off Campus series have all taken place with college age um, consenting adults, but like new adult genre. And I think that the sex is steamy and most of the time is really, you know, a good uh, addition to the book. It's not too much or too little. Um, I will say that because it's like contemporary new adult college kids, some of the language is very like not sexy to me because it's just like get on me um so that was just something that kind of is different to read for me than like these a little more flowery a little more um behind closed doors sex scenes um I, I think I think they're sexy and I think they're steamy it's just sort of a language adjustment when it's a new adult contemporary college kid talking to his girlfriend as opposed to you know like a Jamie Fraser Outlander situation so there you have it that's my April wrap-up those are the nine books I read and I'm really looking forward to what I have planned for May and uh, look out for those book reviews that I mentioned in this video thanks bye